Hey, this is Broly, and welcome to my first Dragon Ball Fighters tutorial. When I first got my hands on this game, I was blown away by the level of complexity and depth this game has. And one of the things that I found really interesting from the get-go was the effects of smash attacks and how they affect other properties in the game. And the purpose of this video is to walk through and share some of my insights. Before I get started, quick heads up that this video assumes that you have a working understanding of fighting game notation, so if that's new to you, I've added a link in the description to a beginner's primer. First off, by smash attack, I'm referring to any move that has the launch property and then the automatic super dash follow up. Most characters have three to four different smash attacks. You're standing heavy, you're crouching heavy, 5H and 2H, the last hit of the light auto combo, and jumping down heavy. Smashes come in all shapes and sizes, but when you get right down to it, there are only two distinct types. There's a side smash and an up smash. In general, most characters standing heavy is the side smash and most of the light auto combos, the crouching heavy and the jumping down heavy are your up smashes. So now that we're on the same page as to what exactly a smash attack is, here are the two rules that define how smash attacks impact the properties of other moves for the duration of your combo. Rule number one, any smash attack, whether a side smash or an up smash, will remove the smash and wall balance properties for the duration of the combo. The fact that you can only use one smash attack per combo is precisely why you can use multiple jumping down heavy attacks in a single combo. And this is what makes the standard universal bread and butter combo possible. Another big change is that the attacks that typically calls a wall bounce in the corner will no longer do so after a smash attack has been used. Here are a couple of different examples featuring Goku Blue, Hit, and Bardock. Now there is a major exception to rule number one, and that is that the smash property from the last hit of the light auto combo will always cause a smash, period. Even if another smash attack has already been used in the same combo, that last hit will still cause that smash effect. And there's a lot of characters in the game that can exploit this either through the use of vanish or the use of an assist. And finally, rule number two. Up smashes change the properties of certain moves and special moves. This is the reason why jump heavy will cause a sliding knockdown after an up smash attack like crouching heavy or jumping down heavy has been used or even from the light auto combo, but not from a standing heavy or any other combo starter. This is exactly why Cell's jumping down heavy is actually a side smash rather than up smash because the jump heavy attack will not cause that sliding knockdown. The only way you're going to get that knockdown is from his standard crouching heavy from the ground. Now in addition, up smashes can also change the properties of certain special moves. And again, here's a couple examples. Bardock's 214M is spinning back fist will cause a sliding knockdown, but only after an up smash has been used. Another classic example is Trunks's 236M shining slash normally causes a sliding knockdown, but not when it's used after an up smash. And this is exactly why his most damaging corner combos will actually use the wall bounce effect of change the future instead of the up smash move like crouching heavy or jump down heavy in order to get that sliding knockdown from signing slash as you can see here. Well that's it for me. As always thanks for watching and if you learned something or found this video helpful please like and subscribe because it really helps me out. 
and I'll see you in the next video.